Good morning, everyone. How you guys doing out there? Can you hear me? Let's do this mic better. All right. I am so proud of every one of you that has made a decision to come today. Maybe you haven't heard that for a while. Someone just even saying, I'm proud of you. But this is something to be celebrated and honored that on Easter, you've made a decision that this is just not a normal day for me. I'm going to spend some time worshiping God and thanking him for saving me. And, and that's really good. We need to spend time investing in our spiritual lives. Your spiritual life is the core of who you are. When you're strong spiritually, you have a strong core. And you start making right decisions. You can handle pressure. It doesn't break you. You can raise a good family. You could have some longevity. You could have some endurance. When you're not strong spiritually, this is what happens. You break. You constantly look for escapes because you're hurting and you're empty. You're vulnerable to people and what they say. You're easily offended. You quit easily. If we're going to have a strong life, this is how we're going to get it. We're going to have to invest in our spiritual life. One day, you're going to die. And really all that matters is this. When you die, your body dies. But your spirit goes back to the Lord. That means it's not the end. It's the beginning of eternity. The real you is not your body. The real you is your soul. And there's a Bible verse that says this. And this is really God saying to you, I, this is God saying, I pray I pray that you prosper and you be healthy as your soul prospers. You know what God is saying to some of us? You're really working hard on getting ahead, but you feel like you're on a treadmill, like it's not happening. And God is saying, make sure you don't put the cart before the horse. Prosper inside spiritually and then everything else will follow that. How many understand when you start thinking right, you start making right choices, you start getting the results that you want? Let's give the Lord some praise and honor and thanksgiving today. If this is your first time here, today I want to, we're going to go over some scriptures today. And what is scripture? The word. I'm not here to give you my opinion. Your opinion is just as important as my opinion. But it doesn't mean we're e either one of us are right. We're here to study the word of God. And as we study the word of God, this is what it does. It puts everything back in perspective. That's what we're here to do. Hear from God. So as, I, as we study scripture, it's truth. Listen to it. Let it penetrate your heart. Maybe even take some notes. Because we're talking about your eternal life right now, your spirit. I'm going to pray and then we'll get right into scripture. Father, I just thank you, Lord, for this day. I'm so grateful for everyone that's here in this room. There are those that are online right now and are over, overflows. There's people right now coming here to worship. But most of all, I pray that every single person here receives what you're offering. And what you're offering is life. You're offering eternal life. You're giving us salvation, freedom, peace, wholeness. That we, we would be willing to say, I'm missing something. Lord, help me. Save me. Make me whole. I give you my cares, my worries. I give them to you. Help me. That this would be a day that we call upon you to help us 
And you promised us, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord, they'll be saved. You will answer. Touch us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you again for coming. And, and the title of what I'm going to be talking about today is Because Jesus is Alive. Because Jesus is Alive. And because Jesus is alive, he can give us eternal life. I want to talk about eternal life in these next few moments. And I'm going to give you three truths about eternal life. This next week on the 24th, we're going to have marriage challenge here. And I'm going to be teaching the first class or the first lesson on it. But right after the 24th, I'm going to um, catch a flight and I'm going to Florida. The earliest flight I could catch after the service is a midnight flight. He said, Pastor, why are you going to Florida? My aunt just passed away last week. She got an aneurysm. She was healthy. She was strong. She, start, she got an aneurysm and she passed right away. It was a surprise to all of us. That last week, she was spending time with her son. She just came from a little mini vacation, smiling, and then an aneurysm, and she's gone. So I'm going to fly down there, and I'm going to celebrate her life. But it reminds me of how short life is. I'll even say this, how delicate your life is. The Bible describes our lives like a vapor. Have you ever heated something on the stove and seen a little vapor go up? God says that's your life. One moment you're here and the next moment you're gone. Every single day, a hundred, over 166,000 people breathe their last breath. As a team... And our missionary team and our church, we are looking to see how we can do some missionary work in Ukraine or in Poland, the nation right next to Ukraine, so we could help the people that are right now refugees and they're running for their lives, millions of people. So we call this week and we ask them, what's the greatest need in Ukraine right now? And this is what they said, and it's going to surprise you. They said this, body bags. Thousands of people are dying, and they're found on the streets, and we don't have enough body bags. Now, it's really easy for us to live in America. We're not in war and feel real confident about your future. But I think we just came out of a season when COVID hit everybody, that we started thinking, oh, life is not as guaranteed as I thought. It wasn't COVID that made life a little less stable. The truth was your life is not that stable. This is the reality. Every single person in this place, 100% of you, will die. Now, if you will die, then it's wise to think about eternity and prepare for it. The scripture says, it's better, it's better to spend your time at funerals than at parties. Why is it better to spend your time at funerals rather than parties? Because when you're at a party, you're living, you're escaping from reality. But when you're in a funeral, you're facing your future. And it's good to think about it. The Word of God also says a wise person thinks a lot about death. Not to be morbid, but just understand, just like you got car insurance in case you get in an accident, 
you need to make sure you have eternal assurance because you will die. So a wise person thinks about his future and he prepares for it. While a fool, the scripture says, only thinks about having a good time. So if you're only thinking about having a good time and living for the weekend and living for your next high or living for your next sexual experience or living for the next entertainment thing you're going to do, be careful because you could be in a category of a fool because you're not prepared for your future. You're not preparing yourself. And the worst thing about it, parents, you're not even preparing your kids. It's great that they have a good education. It's great that your kids do good in, good in school. They excel in sports, all that. They have nice clothes. They got brand new vans, whatever. But be careful that you're not dressing them right, making sure they qualify for the right schools, and they don't qualify for heaven. And they're not even trained to make good decisions because they have no foundation of truth. This is what I've learned. Your children will not take on your beliefs. Your children will take on your values. So what's the difference? You could believe something and not value it. Well, how do you know you value something? How you know you value something is this. You sacrifice for it. You invest in it. You take action on it. What you showed your family today is that you value God and your actions show your value. Eternal life. I'm going to give you three truths about eternal life. Truth number one, God wants us to have eternal life. God loves you and has already made a, made a way and a choice for you to have eternal life. It's up to you now if you want to receive it. But you don't have to talk God into this. He wants it for you. Let's read John 3.16. We know this. Maybe you've heard of it. But it's, look at this scripture. It says, for God so greatly loved and dearly prized the world that he even gave his one and only begotten son so that whosoever believes and trusts in him as Savior shall not perish but have eternal life. At the end of this scripture, there's a destination or a punchline. I want you to have eternal life. But before we get to eternal life, there's a statement that God says about you. God loves you. Sometimes we think that God only loves goody two-shoes people. He loves little grandmas or gray hair that are knitting. He loves happy-go-lucky people like God really loves you. Or he loves little cute people. You're so cute. But the scripture doesn't say that he loves goody two-shoes people or he loves nerds. He loves the world. You know who he loves? He loves sinners. He loves thieves. He loves gangbangers. He loves prostitutes. He loves crazy people like you. He loves your mother-in-law. Hallelujah. And you might be thinking, man, I don't know if I'm good enough. God loves the world. What that means, there's not a person in the world that God doesn't love. And your bad behavior doesn't stop him from loving you. He just loves you. You know, I have a grandson and I'm, I'm learning love in a new way. 
He's so cute. Right? But not always does he behave well. The other day, I get home and he just runs to me. I loved it. I loved that he ran to me, put his hands up, and, and I lifted him up. But then he wanted to do that 30 times. After like the 28th time, I'm like, my arms are getting tired. I don't need to work out anymore. I got to do stuff like that. I go, okay, Xander, I want to eat now. I haven't ate all day. And this is what he did. He started crying like a tantrum because he wanted his way screaming at the top of his lungs like someone was killing him. They were ready to call CPS. <laughs> so I go, okay, one more time. It was crazy. As soon as I said one more time, the crying stopped and he started smiling. This is what I'm saying. Xander doesn't always behave well but it doesn't stop me from loving him. And what God is saying, I want you to know one thing. I love you. I love the world. So now, this is what I did. I want a relationship with you so bad that I gave something for it. How many like to get good deals? Like, one of the things with me, I, I, I'm a negotiator. And if I don't feel like I get a good deal, I feel like I get buyer's remorse. I should have asked for a bigger discount. I don't want to pay too much. I want a good deal. Does anybody want to get a good deal around here? Like, I ask for discounts, like, everywhere. Like, is, what's the discount? Do you guys have any coupons? Give me your cousin discount. Do something. Make me feel like I got a good deal. You know why? I don't want to pay more than something's worth. I don't want to get ripped off. Say, so what does that have to do with you? There was a price to pay for you, to forgive you of your sins, to restore relationship with you, and the payment was a high payment. God had to give the life of his only son so that he would pay the price for our sins so we could be forgiven and have eternal life. Well, God was saying, you're so valuable to me, there's nothing I wouldn't give for you. God loves you. Look what the scripture says. That whosoever believes and trusts in him as Savior shall not perish. I want to, some of us in this room, you got the wrong perspective about God. And you think that every time you do something wrong, he has a gavel and he's ready to punish you. God's saying here, I don't want to punish you. I want to give you eternal life. I don't want you to perish. The word perish means to ruin your life, to destroy your life, to be in pain, to be suffering. I don't want you to be in pain. I don't want you to suffer. I want you to have eternal life. Let's give the Lord a hand that he wants. Come on, he wants something good for us. Now, I want to talk just for a few seconds, what is eternal life? Because some of us think eternal life is just like you're, this is what we think alone, this is what it is, I'm going to live forever. But do you know this, that you will live forever? But there's two options, eternal life or eternal death. That means there's going to be those that are living and have eternal life. And there's going to be those after they die, they're going to experience eternal death means eternal separation from God, eternal misery, eternal suffering, eternal punishment. That'll be their experience. 
But God wants to give us eternal life. Now, that word eternal life is a Greek word, and it's pronounced Zoe. Say it with me, Zoe. Some of you guys are going to go home, man. What'd you learn? Man, I learned some Greek at church. Like, I'm smart. So this word eternal life is eternal Zoe. And what it means is this, absolute fullness of life, which belongs to God. The opposite would be absolute emptiness of life, which you already have without the Lord. Every one of us want fullness of life. And I'm going to give you some news. There's no one that can give you fullness of life because there's only one person that has it, it's Jesus. You're not going to find fullness of life in a drug. That's called the drug life. That's not called the Zoe life. You're not going to find fullness of life in an amount of money you got in a bank account or fame or power. You're not going to find fullness of life with a new boyfriend or a new husband or a new wife. Some of us are going from one relationship to another relationship to another relationship, and you're trying to find fulfillment. Really? Do we really think that the next Budweiser you drink is going to be the one? Many of us are trying to find fullness of life being shopaholics. Someone said the first service, I don't have enough money to do that. You don't need a lot of money to be a shopaholic. You could be a shopaholic at 7-Eleven. You got 10 bucks, burn a hole. I bet you this 10 bucks can make me whole. A Slurpee, it's not enough. A Doritos, whew, I still got money. Maybe a little Budweiser, that will solve it right there. You cannot buy fullness of life. It will leave you empty. And for some of us, it'll leave you with a garage full of junk. But not fullness of life. We've seen this happen in the last few weeks with Will Smith. I'm not dogging Will Smith. He's just a great example right now. Because I know Will Smith is a driver. He's focused and he has some aspirations one of them was to be one of the best actors in the world. He is. Great talent. He, I'm sure he has some other aspirations to make a lot of money. He's a very rich man. And maybe he had another aspiration to marry a beautiful actress. He did that. And then he says, I want to win an Oscar. I've never won an Oscar. He got that. But all of that outside success did not fix his inner turmoil. When Will Smith lost it, have you ever lost it up here? Like just act a fool. Have you ever done that? <laughs> there they go. <laughs> oh, there they go. Oh, there. <laughs> Some of you guys are like, you go into cycles of just being a fool. Like you do good for like two months and then I got to be a fool. <laughs> Does anybody have a family member like that? I know it ain't you. I know it's a family member you got that going caring on everybody. Right? Will Smith went through that. Somehow something got took over. And he slapped Kid Rock. And is it Kid Rock? Chris Rock. <laughs> Same thing. No. <laughs> different, all different tone and everything on that. <laughs> See? You guys are crazy. You guys love me making mistakes. Like, like, You're stupid. <laughs> Tell a story. Get it right. 
Okay, Chris Rock. But Chris Rock didn't know what was coming. Like he saw it coming, like, whoa, hey, ho, oh, bam. <laughs> and it wasn't over because then he sat down and like, da, 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 just going crazy. He regrets that moment. But I do know this, he's just like me. I am not judging him because that's me without being set free and being made whole and being made complete. Come on, fullness of life is the only one. Eternal life is the only one that can fix you on the inside. So eternal life is fullness of life, which belongs to God. It's a blessed life, it's abundant life. It's a life devoted to God. It's the never ending life. Eternal life. So what is it? It's fullness of life. What's eternal life? It's not just living forever. It's a quality of life. It's a great life. It's a complete life. And because I'm complete and because I'm whole, I could be true to my wife. I could keep my word. Because I, and I could stay sober. Because there's something in me that's whole and complete. I'm no longer searching for meaning. I'm no longer searching to be filled. I'm not no longer lost. But there's some, God found me in my worst. And he says, Marco, I love you. You can change. I'm offering you a new beginning. I'm offering you a new start. You can have eternal life. You can have fullness of life. Look at this. John 10, 10. The thief comes only to, in order to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come in order that you might have life and life in its fullness. So what is Jesus offering? Not religion. He's offering life. Religion can make, give you fullness of life. Your good works cannot give you fullness of life. Your plastic surgery cannot give you fullness of life. Now your lips might be fuller, <laughs> but you'll not have fullness of life. <laughs> you might look better on the outside, but it doesn't change your inside. Now if you want to get some plastic surgery, do it, but don't try to find eternal life in it. <laughs> you know, I said that, I don't want to judge nobody. It's okay to want to look good, but don't think your outside is going to fix your inside. Your new shoes won't fix you. Your new purse won't fix you. Hey, 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 hey. There's only one that can fix you, but there's a thief. Jesus talks about the thief before he talks about the offer. What he's saying, there's two types of life you can live. You can live a life with a thief in it. Have you ever had a thief in your house? Like you have to put stuff away in your own house. Have you ever had a thief in your house? Have you ever been the thief? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> like you're just looking, I got I to gotta come up on something. I'm ready. I, 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 I'm feeding it right now. <laughs> I've had thieves in my house. Stuff goes missing. But check this out. Some of you have a thief in your life. Not just in your house. There's a devil there. The thief is the devil. He's out to kill your dreams, destroy your marriage, steal your peace, steal your joy, steal your future, make you waste your life. Now you could serve the devil, but I guarantee this is going to be your results. Killing, stealing, and destroying is happening to you. So you could go to the next relationship, but that won't work either. You could move cities, but that won't work either because everywhere you go, there you are with your thief. A few months ago, we had a thief attack our church. They took one of our trailers that had chairs in it. 
we showed up here. All the chairs that we sit on outside during our, our sunrise service, they were gone. We didn't know where they were until one of the member, brothers of a member of the church called me. He goes, bro, on the down low, I asked my friends in my hood where they got this trailer from, and they said the Way World Outreach. Your trailer is at 6181 Sepulveda. Come and pick it up, but don't let them know I told you because I don't want to be known as a snitch in the hood. And, I go, and he says, bring some heavy hitters. I go, okay, we'll bring some heavy. We got some heavy hitters up in here. So I sent some of our guys from our men's home, barely saved. Pick up that trailer, homie. I got some work for you. Got some work to be done. We got your pastor. What else? Nothing else, bro. Just relax. We're just picking up a trailer. Nothing else. Because if we have to do whatever, whatever, whatever. We got a trailer back. You know, what's your pastor? What do I have to do with it? Some of you right now are going to get your life back. Come on. You're going to get your freedom back. You're going to get your family back. Come on. You're going to get your dreams back. Give God some praise that God will restore what the devil has stolen from you. It's not too late. God will resurrect what has died. Now, don't you trip. God loves you. He wants to help you. I would say this. Stop being hard-headed. <laughs> well, I think it'll change this time. Change and you still have the same demonic partner. Sin is still leading you, your temptation is still leading you, your drug is still leading you, your lust is still leading you, your greed is still leading you, and, and your hood is still leading you, your pride is still leading you, but yet you think you're going to get different results. You're not. You could trade in whoever you want to trade in in your life and act like every person in your life is disposable and you're going to blame every one of them, but you're going to have to look yourself in the mirror. You got a wrong partner. But the Bible says, I come, I've come in order that you might have life and life in its fullness. You know what the reality is? We're emptier than we've ever been. Right now, there's 17.3 million adults that have been diagnosed and are dealing with major depressive disorders. These are just the people that have been diagnosed in the hood. We don't get diagnosed. Like in my family, we don't get diagnosed. You just cray cray. Like nobody in my family ever been no psychologist or diagnosed my problem. They just don't. They're just depressed. And they're just suicidal. And they're just angry. But this is the truth. 17.3 million people have been diagnosed with major depression, major emptiness, major hopelessness. 1.9 million children from three years old to 17 have been diagnosed with depression. Well, how can a three-year-old be depressed? You as a parent passed it on. Don't you ever think that you're going to live a life without God, doing life your way, and not pass on the lifestyle? When you overcome, you help them overcome. But I have good news for every single person here that's depressed and broken and feel like you've lost everything. Jesus is saying, I've come to give you life in its fullness and it's available to you right now in 2022 on this Sunday, right now. My, 
my son-in-law, Gabriel, he's a miracle. Like Gabriel came from a family of gangbangers, killers, living a lifestyle from one generation to the next generation. We're about our neighborhood. Mexican mafia. Gabriel was passed on this lifestyle. His brother is in prison for murder, but he's saved right now. He's born again. There's hope for him. That's his brother right there. And then we got this other gangster right here, Abriana, my daughter, like, what's? No, just kidding. She's not a gangster. <laughs> this is Gabriel now with his brothers. She got saved and, his, and Gabriel's parents. Gabriel came to this church, addicted to drugs, homeless, with a legacy. All he knew was fighting, murder, violence. He came to church one day and he says, I'm tired of living the life under the thief. I want the abundant life that God is offering through faith in Jesus Christ. Gabriel received it. And when he received it, it changed his desires. He was set free from the addiction. And now he was on the path of the abundant, full life. Now, when you start this walk, you pursue it. Just like you used to pursue your junk, pursue the full life. Every time we had, we were open for church, Gabriel don't have no car. He don't even have a bike. So he has to borrow his sister's bike. And you'll see Gabriel on his little bike. A sissy bike. No, just, I just pink her a little pink bike with little frizzles and a little boring. No. Right in the church. He started working with what he had. He kept pursuing this abundant life. He started becoming the man of God that God wanted him to be. And he started getting the results that God wanted for him. Around a couple years later, after I'm not missing any Bibles, just coming to church, joining Holy Wars, pursuing God, inviting his friends to church. He's living the full life. He's going for it. He's not doing it halfway. I'm all in. Be careful that you're not trying to get the full life with a half-hearted commitment. May this not be your last Sunday. May this become your new habit. That I got 168 hours a week, I got to give at least one to Jesus. Come here every Sunday and start working on the full life. You gave enough time to the devil, it's time for you to give some time to God. And where you invest, you'll get a return. I guarantee you. Two years later, he comes up to me. He goes, Pastor, I go, what? He goes, God told me that you're supposed to mentor me. I'm like, really? He didn't tell me nothing, bro. <laughs> like he's believing this abundant life stuff. He goes, no, he told me. I go, okay, we'll see then. I'm not making no commitments. Because I know if I make a decision to mentor you, that's some work. So it just happens that he's with me everywhere I go. I'm praying for people. He's standing right there just snooping like, what, 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 what are we doing here? We're casting out a demon. How you do that? <laughs> Two years after that, he comes up to me, tells me something really crazy. He tells me that God told him that my daughter is his wife. I go, bro, you better be hearing from God right now. But God had a plan for him. He ended up marrying my daughter. Now they have a grandchild, and they're launching a church 
in one of the greatest hoods in America, Compton. Come on. This year, God took a young man that was lost on the streets, serving the devil. The devil was killing, stealing, and destroying to him and through him. But God said, son, you no longer have to live that life. I got eternal life for you. I got a full life for you. And God is telling you now, it's not too late. Tell the devil to shut up. Tell him, say, shut up. You know why I'd say that? Because the devil will speak to you. You messed up. That ain't what happened for you. Uh-uh. God doesn't love you. You're different. You can't do this. Or another voice. Not now. Mañana. Another day, but not today. And if you keep living another day, you'll never do it. You got to stop making decisions just because you feel like it. You need to start living a life out of conviction. Like this is right and I know that God's speaking to my heart and it's time for change. Not tomorrow. Right now my family has to change. My mind has to change. My relationships have to change. My decisions have to change. Right now if you change, then your family can change. It's up to you. God is good. Truth number two, I'm going to wrap this up. <laughs> MC's on the mic, we're going to wrap this up. <laughs> All right, let's go. Truth number two, Jesus is the only source of eternal life. Everyone that has Jesus has eternal life. Everyone that does not have, does not have Jesus does not have eternal life. You know what that means? Everyone that does not have Jesus has an empty life. Everyone that does not have Jesus does not have healthy relationships, for sure. Everyone that does not have Jesus has habits that they can't break. Everyone that does not have Jesus, the truth is, there's depression that comes in and out of that life. Anxiety, fear. Thoughts of unworthiness, you're worth nothing. Without Jesus, you don't have eternal life. You could fake it. You could smile. You could dance. You could buy yourself a new car, put some rims on it. You're still empty. Yeah, remember back in the day, they used to have those spinners? <laughs> that was funny rims. You'd be sitting in the, the, the rims would be like going... And you just, just stop like, what? See my spirit? <laughs> you thought you were the man. See my spinners? That's my identity. <laughs> but without Jesus, you don't have fullness of life. That's why I talk to everybody about Jesus. Because I already know that they don't have what they're looking for. Well, I'm an atheist. No, stop it. You just like to sin. And you don't want God because he's going to tell you, stop sinning. And you just talk yourself out of God, talk yourself out of creation, talk yourself out of, uh, about the amazing person that you are, and just say, there's no God. Why, you don't, why are you trying to excuse God? Because there's only one reason. You just love your life. But the truth is, when you put your head on that pillow, the real you's there, and you're hurting. And God loves you. And he's real. We'll end it with the scripture in 1 John 5, 11. And this is the testimony. God has given us eternal life. Who's given us eternal life? Who's the source of this full life? And this life is in his son. He's the one that died for your sins and my sins. He's the one that loves you. And I don't know what greater way he could show his love than giving his life for you. He's not trying to negotiate. I'm paying the price, my life. The one who has the son, check this out, has eternal life. If you have Jesus in your life, you have eternal life. And this is, what, this is a question I'm going to ask you. Have you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Have you made up your mind that you're done living your way and allow, have you made a decision to turn from your way and follow Jesus because he is the way? Have you received Jesus as your Lord and Savior? I'm talking about religion. 
I'm talking about receiving Jesus as your Lord. Say, God, take over my life. Jesus, lead my life. From here on out, I'm going to follow you. Help me. If you've not made that decision, you could know about Jesus but not have him. The one who has the son has eternal life. The one who does not have the son does not have eternal life. You might be saying, I think I got eternal life because I was baptized as a baby. Baptism does not give you eternal life. Well, I think I got eternal life because I grew up in the church. Growing up in the church, you don't like get, like, you just like transfer eternal life through being contagious. You only have eternal life by God speaking to your heart through his spirit and making you realize, I'm empty. It's true. I'm not sure if I were to die right now to go to heaven. There's only going to be two eternal existence. And truth number three, only two options, eternal life or eternal punishment. Look at this last verse, 20, Matthew 25, 46. Then these unbelieving people will go away into eternal unending punishment. There's going to be a group of people that go into eternal and unending punishment? Let me see, unending torment, pain, loss, confinement, and misery. They won't be able to get out of it. I've heard people tell me, Marco, Pastor Marco, I believe this earth is hell. And this is what I'll say. I agree with you that you're experiencing hell at a degree, but not the fullness of it. Because the more you live apart from God, the darker your life becomes, the more confined you are, the angrier you get, the more hopeless you become. It's just a hellish life. Then, then even in your sleep, the demons invade. Nightmares. Can't sleep. I got to escape. And you could escape through all kinds of entertainment. You could go to Coachella all weekend. And when you come back, you're going to be full of probably more demons. But you're not going to be full of life. It says, but. Someone say, but. I love that but right there. <laughs> you guys are crazy. Someone got a dirty mind like, he loved that but. You got to stop it. All right. <laughs> Let's keep going. <laughs> See, I'm crazy. I, I need help, right? See, I need help too. How many know I need help? Thank you, thank you Jesus, for saving me. That because I'd be messed up. <laughs> those who are righteous, someone say, those who are what? And in right standing with God, will go by His remarkable grace. He didn't earn it into eternal, unending life, fullness of life for eternity. This is it. You make a choice while you have breath in your lungs. You decide if you want the fullness of life and you want to make Jesus the leader of your life or you choose to allow the thief to continue to kill, steal, and destroy everything in your life. And if you want to go one more round, I'm going to tell you, your life is winding downward. Nothing's going to change because you still have the same leader. There has to be a day that you give up your life. Say, so I'm tired, Lord, of living the way I'm living. Change me. Save me. I know you love me. I'll receive your love. Stop pushing love away. Receive the love. I'm not offering you religion. No one's judging you. There's an offer being made. You could have a new life today. And it's found in accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you don't, you stay where you're at. It's only going to get worse, and I'll say this. You could end up in a place of eternal punishment because you refuse to accept Jesus being punished for you. So that means he wanted to pay your bail. He wanted to do it. He paid it. All you had to do was accept it, but you rejected it. And if you reject it, it will be your choice. And if you end up in hell and your family ends up there, and just think about this, parents, this last time I'm saying, your daughter, your son ends up there. You end up there hearing the screams of your kids saying, Dad, Mom, why did you tell me about this place? You got me new shoes. 
You made sure I was doing good in sports. But you didn't prepare me for eternity. I'm in hell. I can't get out. Mom, Dad. Oh, son, I was just too busy. I was too busy. I was distracted. I never got around to it. It was eternity, Mom. Dad, what? Get me out of here. Son, you can't get out. It's done. It's never ending. I know Jesus died for us and he offered us a new life, but we were too busy. Please, don't let that be your eternity. Moment of decision. God wants to give you a new life. And because he resurrected, you can have a new life. Let's all stand up, please. I'm going to tell you this, guys. God loves you. Guys, and me, you don't know me, but I love you. So how can you love me? You don't even know me. God's spirit is in me. He's living in me, through me. His love is my love for you. Just so you know, I'm not leaving San Bernardino. Like I'm going to Florida. I'm coming back, though. I'm going to be here. We're going to have churches all over the world. We're going to visit them, but I'm going to come right back here. Why am I coming here? There's going to be some stability in your life. Come on. There's going to be some stability in your life. It's time for you to allow stability. I'm going to be here. I'm called here. I ain't going nowhere. <laughs> I'll die right here. Okay. But I really want, this is what I want, God wants, I want what God wants. I want one day, 100 years from now, that we have a reunion over there. God's trying to save some of you from a lot of pain and hurt. Some of us right now are getting ready to go to massive destruction like massive pain, massive loss. If you don't make a decision, the devil has a plan for your life. Kill, steal, and destroy. And if you continue allowing him to lead your life, you might not have another go around. This might be it. You could lose your mind on the next go around. You could lose your life on the next go around. You could lose a family member on the next go around. Stop playing with your eternity. Stop playing Russian roulette with your life. It takes a real man or woman to say, man, I need, sa I need to be saved. I had to make that decision myself. My dad wasn't a believer. My dad was a womanizer. He beat my mom, put guns to her head, punched her in the face. And he ended up dying in a gunfight. He died in a gutter with a bullet between his eyes. That was an option for me. But I realized, God, if you want to offer me a new life, why wouldn't I, why would I reject it? And I made up my mind. I'm going to live for God. And that's why I'm here. God has a great plan for your life. Gabriel is ready to launch a church. I wonder what great plan God has for your life if you just say yes to it. Let's end it with this. Be honest. And I'm going to ask you a question. If today in the overflow room, online, if today were your last day on earth, it wouldn't be the end of you. After death, judgment, you can stand before God. Where would you go? Eternal life or eternal punishment, torment, suffering, separation from God? Where would you go? And if you're saying, Pastor, I don't know, that's okay. It's okay right now not to know, but you don't have to leave here not knowing. Because he who has Jesus has eternal life. So how do I get Jesus? It's very simple. Believe that he died for your sins, was punished for the wrong things you've done, accept it. You don't have to earn your way into heaven. He paid the price. You did the crime. I did the crime. He did the time. He paid. Receive the forgiveness. Receive the forgiveness. Receive 
the grace. You don't have to earn it. It's a gift. Receive the gift. It's a gift of new life, of eternal life, the fullness of life, eternal life. You can have it. You receive it. Believe and receive that Jesus died for your sins, rose from the dead, and now you could have them in your life saying yes. You're one yes away from having fullness of life. You'll have it, and then you got to work it. What you mean by that is start investing in your soul. And every day you're investing in your spiritual life, you're going to see growth. Desires changing. Joy coming. It's like the sun's going to start rising in your life. Today's your day. When I count to three, say, Pastor, I'm not sure I'm right with God, but I want to give my life to Jesus. I want eternal life. I want fullness of life. You can say yes or no. Keeping your hand down is saying no. But if you want it, you're going to have to ask for it. You're going to have to say it. Jesus died publicly for you. Don't be ashamed of God. He's not ashamed of you. The Bible says, if you deny me before men, I'll deny you before my Father. What he's saying is, when you stand before God, you're going to stand out all alone. Don't be intimidated to go to hell. Raise your hand if you need help, if you need salvation, you need forgiveness, I need fullness of life. Maybe you got everything this world has to offer, but your soul is in poverty. You're struggling. Some of us here, you need to let go of your pride and recommit your life to the Lord. Well, what are people going to think? Forget about that. Is that going to be your excuse when you, if you end up in hell? Well, I was just concerned what people thought. When you stand before God, you're going to stand all by yourself. It's a decision you make. One, when I say three, raise your hands all over this building. If you want to give your life to Jesus, you want to, come on, you're done doing it your way. I want eternal life. I want fullness of life. Two, and when I say three, boom, just raise your hand. One, two, three, raise your hands all over this building. I see all those hands. Proud of you. Come on, proud of you. Proud of you. Come on, way in the back, all around the building. Proud of you. Proud of you. Proud of you. Come on, you're making a decision. No one is going to get to heaven by accident. It's a choice. I'm going to ask you a big favor. Those that raise their hands, I'm going to say, in, in, a, in an overflow room, if you raise your hand, we got a team right here in the front. And all we're going to do is want, I want to pray with you. If you raise your hand, would you do me this big, huge favor and give me the honor and privilege of praying with you? This is your first step of moving forward with God. So if you raise your hand, I want you to take a step outside your seats. Come up here real quick. And all we're going to do, we're not going to embarrass you. We're just going to pray. But this is you saying I'm serious about the decision. I mean, just come forward. Just come forward. Let's give them a hand. Come on, they're coming forward. In overflow, just come forward. At home, just raise your hand. Get ready. Stand up. Stand up in your living room. Stop your car. Come on, church, let's celebrate. Ce Heaven's celebrating right now. Come on, church, they're coming. They're coming. They're coming. Ask your neighbor. You want to go up there, I'll go up there with you. Some of mine just need a little nudge. I want to go. Ask your neighbor. You want to go up there, I'll go up there with you. Come on, it's the greatest decision you'll ever make. Fullness of life. He's the only one that can restore what's been stolen, what's been broken. New life. You are the It's not over. takes a real woman to live for God. Anybody could do what everybody else is doing. Come on. This is it. Love you. Love you. God bless you. Love you. God bless you. Love you. God bless you. Proud of you, man. Proud of you. All right. All right. Come on. They're still coming. They're still coming, church. Let's never get, come on. Let's never get bored of people receiving Christ as their Lord and Savior. Okay. They're still coming, so I'm going to give them an opportunity. Come on, they're singing. Come on up. Receiver your We need more workers, too. Come on, you're a P12 leader. Come up here. A discipleship group. We're going to need some help up here. All right. We're backed up in the aisles here. We're backed up in both aisles. 
So I need some help. Okay. Say with me, instruction. Today, God's giving you instruction. And you know what you did? You received it. You might think you don't have a lot of faith, and I'm going to tell you, you do. How do I know you got real faith? You took action. I know this. Before we came here today, some of you just came because someone was just getting on your nerves. Invited, oh, okay, I'll go. Orale, what's up? <laughs> but you came. And this is truth. If they would have told you, you know you're going to go up and give your life to Jesus, you'd be like, please. But God spoke to you. It wasn't me. Because I know how, you, how we are and I know how you are too. Ain't nobody could just make you do stuff. God spoke to you. And for some of you, you thought, man, I'm not hearing from God. Today is proof you're hearing from God. The devil didn't make you do this. God is saying, come on, son. Come on, daughter. I got the full life. Come on. Stop wasting time. Live for me. Today, we're going to pray. At the end of this prayer, you're going to receive eternal life. And you're going to become a soldier of Jesus Christ. You're going to become... A disciple of Jesus Christ. We're not saying a prayer and then you walk away and go back to your old life. We're done with that life. It's a new walk. You're going to grow now by choice. You'll never be see growth in any area you're not consistent in. It's some basic instructions. After we pray, your next step, the Bible says repent and then get baptized. Next Sunday, we're going to have a huge baptism. And baptism represents, we don't sprinkle you with water, we dunk you. What does a dunking mean? It's like a burial, that's your old life. And when you come out of the water, you're letting everybody know the old me is dead and now there's a new me and the new me, my identity is Jesus. I'm a follower of Jesus. I got a t-shirt for you. And this is a t-shirt right here. Jesus, save me. Now, you're going to get your t-shirt today if you're ready to follow Jesus. Don't grab this t-shirt and you, if you're just playing. I don't think you are. But how you show you're not playing is by action. This t-shirt is for baptism. So next week, you're coming. You used to go to parties all weekend long, every weekend. You were there. Now you're going to come to this party. And you're going to learn, and you're going to grow, and you're going to be a leader. Your schedule's changing because your leader has changed. We're going to, give you, we're going to get signed up for a t-shirt. We're going to sign up for baptism. Next week, we're going to have like 500 people getting baptized. And you were saying, I'm following Jesus. I'm not everybody. Invite your family. They, they won't believe it. <laughs> you, 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 you. Yeah, me. Check it out, man. It's a miracle. And when I go under that water, I'm going to another level when I come out. Come on. Are you ready to surrender all to Jesus? Let's pray. Let's pray. Repeat after me. Just re let's pray together. Let's pray together. Repeat after me. Say, say, Jesus, I thank you for loving me before I ever loved you. Thank you, Jesus for dying on the cross and paying the price for the wrong I've done. Thank you, Lord. Today, I open my heart and I repent of my sins. I'm tired of doing my life my way. 
I surrender. Take over my life. I believe you died and you rose again to give me new life. I open my heart. I receive you, Jesus. Fill me now with your spirit, with your love, and set me free from all bad habits, all addictions. I receive forgiveness, and I forgive people that have hurt me. I let it go. I thank you, Lord. I am saved. I have eternal life, and I am a disciple of Jesus Christ. Starting today, in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Come on, church. Let's celebrate like someone just got saved. Online, we love you. God bless you. If you're here, we're just gonna, we need two or three more minutes of your time. We want to make sure everyone.